All right, here are solutions to the linear equations worksheet. Um, this first problem here, uh, the basic idea on all these problems is you want to get x all by itself. So to start with, we have x's on both sides of the equation. So we want to add or subtract some number of x from both sides or to both sides. Um, so you could add x to both sides, and that would get rid of this one, but it would leave you with the negative x. So I think a better strategy would be to add 2x over here. And if you add 2x over there, you got to add 2x over here. And what that will leave you with is these will cancel out, and you'll get 10 equals 4 minus 1x plus 2x would be 1x. Um, oops, would be 1x plus 1x. Um, and then we want x all by itself, so we have to get rid of this 4. So if we subtract 4 from both sides, what we get is 6 over here and an x over here. So... I'll just write x equals 6 as my answer. All right, second one. Similar process. we got x's on both sides of the equation. So um, kind of have some options here. You could add 4x to both sides or subtract 10x from both sides. Um, doesn't really matter what you do. As you'll see, you'll end up with a negative number either way. Maybe this time I'll subtract 10x from both sides. And what that'll do is cancel out this x and just leave me with the 7 over here. And then I got negative 4x minus 10 more x. So that's negative 14x. And now what I want to do is divide both sides by negative 14. Not quite sure how to write that. Um, I guess I could write it right here. If I divide both sides by negative 14, then what I'll end up with is 7 over negative 14 on this side and just an x over here, 1x. Um, and then 7 over negative 14 is a fraction we can reduce. Um, 7 goes into 14 twice and we got it, 1 negative, so we got negative 1 half for our final answer. I guess that's a good as way to write them up as any. Um, okay, down here, we can't begin this process that we were doing above um, until we get rid of all the parentheses. So our first step will be just to get rid of the parentheses. Um, if we distribute that 2 through, we'll get 6x minus 4 equals 4 minus x. And now we can start adding and subtracting things to both sides. Maybe we'll add x to both sides. And that leaves me with 7x minus 4 equals 4. And then add 4 to both sides. And we're left with just 7x equals 8. And now if you divide both sides by 7, you get x equals 8 sevenths. All right, moving on. Uh, number 4 here, same thing. We've got a lot of parentheses. Maybe before we get the parentheses, we can look for like terms, because there's some like terms inside the parentheses in this one. Um, so we have a 4 and a positive 2. We can call that 6. If we add those together, and then we got our minus x. And similarly, over here we have a 4 and a 2, so we got this 6. Um, and now we can distribute. 2 times 6 minus x is, if we distribute the 2 in, you get 12 minus 2x. And then on the right here, if you distribute the negative 2 in, you get negative 12 plus 2x. So we want to get similar, but not the same. So we want to get all the x's together on one side, so we could add 2x to both sides of the equation. And that leaves us with just 12 on this side and negative 12 plus 4x over here. And we could add 12 to both sides. And that'll leave us with just 4x on this side. Maybe I'll write it over here to keep things in line. And 24 on this side. And then if you divide both sides by 4, Kind of short on room here, but you'd end up with x equals 6 if we divide both sides by 4. You know what? I'm going to write x equals 24 divided by 4, which is equal to 6. Just to kind of show my steps a little bit better. Um, all right, back up to the top here. Number 5, maybe I'll switch colors so things don't run together too 
badly. Um, Want to get rid of parentheses, but maybe first we could look for some like terms. Uh, we don't have anything on the left here, so I can just rewrite the left. But over here on the right, we got a 6 and a plus 2. So we could put those together. 6 plus 2 is 8. And then we got a minus 4x and then plus 5 times negative 2. And now we kind of have some parentheses. We've got these parentheses over here. So we can distribute the 4 in and get 8 minus 4x minus 10 if I distribute this 4 in here. And then on the right, we got 8 minus 4x and 5, whoops, 4x. And 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. Um, now we can combine like terms again. We got 8 and a negative 10. So that's negative 2 minus 4x is equal to, and it's kind of same thing over here, 8 and a negative 10. Actually, what you might notice is that we have the exact same thing on both sides of the equation. So you can draw your conclusion immediately, or you can go one more step and add these x's to both sides. And then you end up with negative 2 equals negative 2, because the x's all cancel out. Um, this is always true. Maybe I'll write that in parentheses. For any value of x, negative 2 equals negative 2 because there's no x's in here. So our answer would be all real numbers are solutions. What that's saying is you can stick in any number you want for x in this x and this x, and the left side of the equation will be equal to the right side of the equation. So I'll box that since that's my answer. And move on to the next one. Ooh, these are starting to get pretty messy, but we can deal with them. Um, I guess step by step. So first I'll look for like terms. And I have some inside these innermost parentheses. I got a 1 and a negative 5. So that gives me negative 4. Um, and on the right here, I don't have any like terms. Um, so maybe I'll just leave it alone. All right, and the next step I'm going to look to distribute. Um, I want to start from the innermost parentheses. So I have this negative 4 right here. I can distribute that in. So I'll leave everything alone out here. But instead of negative 4 times all this stuff, I'll distribute the negative 4 in and get negative 8x. And negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. And then on the right here, I could distribute the 2 in and get 6x plus 8. And then I could distribute the negative in. Be careful there. That's kind of a tricky one. And I get negative 4 plus x because negative and the negative make a positive. Still one more set of parentheses to handle over here. But before I deal with it, I could combine like terms. I have a 3 and a 16. That gives me 19. And I have an x and a negative 8x, which gives me negative 7x. And then I still have this negative 5 just hanging out out here. And then I got a 6x plus, actually I guess on the left here I can combine like terms. I have a 6x and an x. So I got a 7x. And I got an 8 minus 4. Gives me a positive 4. Whew, all right. Um, let's see, now I can distribute to get rid of these last set of parentheses. 2 times 19 is 38. 2 times negative 7x is negative 14x. Um, and then over on the right, I have like terms again. 38 minus 5 is 33. And now I've finally gotten, to it, gotten it to a spot where it kind of looks like a problem like number 2, for example. Um, no more parentheses, no more like terms. So I'm going to start adding and subtracting things to both sides of the equation. Um, to keep things positive, maybe I'll add 14x to both sides. And I'm a little low on room, but that'll leave me with just a 33 on this side and a 21x plus 4 over here. And then I want to subtract 4 from both sides. Now I'm really low on room. Maybe I can... jump up to here. 
Um, 33 minus 4 would give me 29. And on the right, I would have 21x. And so finally, if I divide both sides by 21, I get x equals 29 divided by 21. Um, if you can do that problem, you can do pretty much any of these. It's about as hard as I could make one. Um, that doesn't involve fractions anyways. Depending on how much you like fractions, you might hate 8 even more. Um, but moving on, number 7 here. Same kind of idea. we got lots of parentheses we'll want to get rid of, but our first step will be to look for like terms. We don't have any on the left here, but on the right we do. We have a 4 and a minus 3, so what those give us is just positive 1. That gets us here. Um, the more like terms, so I guess we can distribute. We got this 2 that we can distribute in, and that gives us 6x plus 2 minus 5x plus 12 on the left. Then we got this negative sign we can distribute in. That gives us negative 1 minus x plus 12. Uh, let's collect like terms again. We got 6x and a minus 5x, so that just leaves us 1x. And then we got 2 and 12. That gives us 14. And then on the right, we got um, minus 1x, and then we got negative 1 and positive 12. So that gives us 11. Now if you add x to both sides you get is 2x plus 14 over here and 11 over here. So if you subtract 14 from both sides, getting closer, we got 2x left on the left and negative 3 on the right. And so if you divide both sides by 2, you get x equals negative 3 halves for your final answer. Um, all right, the fraction problem. Um, maybe I'll save myself some room over here to kind of show my work because I think multiplying some fractions together might not be as obvious and even adding fractions. Okay, so I don't have any like terms in this problem, so the first step is to distribute. So I have this one half that I can distribute into these parentheses and one half times one third is one sixth x and one half times negative two fifths will end up being negative one-fifth, and maybe that'll be my first line of work, um, one-half times negative two-fifths. I can cancel out the twos. Maybe I need a different color to do that. Could cancel out these twos. And then what I'm left with is I got a negative one up top. Negative one times, negative, times positive one is negative one. And on the bottom, just a five. So that's where this came from. Um, and then I want to add 2 thirds x, that's this guy. And that equals, let's see, I have to distribute this negative 3 fourths in. Uh, negative 3 fourths times 1 sixth. It's going to be a negative number because it's a negative times a positive. Um, and it'll turn out that that's negative 1 eighth. Although that's probably something I should show in my work column over here. I got negative 3 fourths times one sixth, but I can think about six is three times two. So I got negative three over four times one over three times two. And I, the reason I thought about six is three over two is because now I can cancel this three and this three. And what I'm left with, although it's barely legible, is just negative one up top, and then a four and a two on the bottom. So I get this negative one eighth right here. Okay, and then negative three fourth times negative eight ninths x. Um, it will turn out that that is two thirds. Yeah, two thirds. So maybe I'll just write that in there. It's a positive number, and it's two-thirds x, and where that comes from is, okay, a negative times a negative is a positive, so I can just forget about the negatives. Three-fourths, doesn't really look like a four, times eight-ninths. I could think of as three over two times two. You know, I'll just leave this one as four. 
And then 8 I can think of as 2 times 4. And then 9 I can think of as 3 times 3. So now what I have is a bunch of um, fractions. I can cancel some stuff out. I can cancel this 3 and this 3 and this 4 and this 4. And what I get here is what I just have a 2 left up top and a 3 on the bottom. So that's where this came from. All right. This problem's taking a while. See, now I want to add up these fractions. I have 1 sixth x, and I want to add 2 thirds x. We'll have to have a common denominator. So should I do this? You know, I'm just going to move pieces around. I'm going to say 1 sixth x plus 2 thirds. No, I'm not going to do that. I don't want to confuse people. Okay, I'm going to combine like terms. 1 sixth x plus 2 thirds x. Oh, you can't add those together immediately, but 1 sixth plus two-thirds is the same as one-sixth plus four-sixths if we get a common denominator, which is five-sixths. So really what I get here is five-sixth x minus one-fifth. And that's equal to, I have negative one-eighth plus two-thirds x. All right, now I'm going to subtract two-thirds from both two-thirds x. Um, minus 2 thirds x minus 2 thirds x and then what I'll have to do is cancel out over here so I only have a negative 1 eighth left on this side um, on this side I have to figure out what is 5 sixths minus 2 thirds and I can only add and subtract fractions if I have a common denominator so I have to change 2 thirds into 4 sixths which gives me 1 sixth so what I get here is 1 sixth x minus 1 fifth whew, equals negative 1 eighth. Mm, so I'm almost done. Add 1 fifth to both sides. What that leaves me with is 1 sixth x on this side. And on this side, I have to figure out what is negative 1 eighth plus 1 fifth. Maybe I can squeeze that in here. Negative one eighth plus one fifth. Need a common denominator. It's forty in this case, so I'd get negative five fortieths plus eight fortieths, which is equal to three fortieths. So over on this side, when I add these together, I get three over forty, um, and I'm almost done. Um, in this last step, what I need to do is get x all by itself. So I'll multiply both sides of the equation by 6, or 6 over 1, if it helps you to think about it like that. And that gives me just x on the left, and 6 over 1 times 3 over 40 is 18 fortieths. Um, and 18 fortieths, I can actually reduce that. These are both odd, or these are both even numbers. So I can divide them both by 2. And get a final answer of x equals 9 20ths. Whew. Um, and that finally is the end of this worksheet.